Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much, Sue. And now we'll head to Alex, who's going to lead us in the Chadidi. Thank you so much. So first of all, I want to welcome Rabbi Berger from Abu Dhabi. Nice to have you with us. And nice to have some people from Baku also. Lechadodilikat <laughs> Lechadodi likrat kala pene shabbat ne kabela lechadodi likrat kala pene shabbat ne kabela likrat shabbat lechuvenel ha ki me korabera sof maase bemat shabbat rila. Lechadodi likrat kala pene shabbat ne kabela lechadodi likrat kala pene shabbat ne kabela mikdash melech yirmelucha kumitzei mitocha fecha rav lach shevet beyem kabacha veu yachmol alayichem la. Lechadodi likrat kala pnei shabbat ne kabela lechadodi likrat kala pnei shabbat ne kabela yami mosmoti fati veyet Al Yadish ben Parti ben Ismecha ben Agila lechadadi likat kala unei Shabbat nekabela lechadadi li. Kabela, <laughs> Boi chala, boi chala, lechadadi nikrat kala, unei shabbat nekabela, lechadodi nikrat kala, lechadodi nikrat kala, yeah. Thanks, Alex. And now I'm going to turn to Ambassador Naya, who's going to introduce today's speaker. Hi. So, um, Huda sent me uh, Tamar's bio, but I want to tell you about Tamar in the world of the foreign ministry and what the foreign ministry thinks of uh, Tamar. So Mr. Tamar Schwarzbad from the Digital Diplomacy Division is responsible for the strategy and content in everything related to the social networks that the office manages from the headquarters in Jerusalem. She manages a team of over 10 employees who are responsible for writing and producing content in various languages. She also serves a professional guide for the local employees at the embassies in all digital matters. Tamar is the living spirit of the digital, digital Diplomacy Division, a world-renowned expert in social networks who contributes substantially and significantly to our success in the, in the digital field. 
She puts herself all into her work, initiates and brings exceptional quality to the digital, uh, digital content of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Shows absolute commitment to the state of Israel, its values, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Works day and night when needed, and in times of emergency, and even on Saturdays and holidays. Tamar recently left a significant mark when she had the direct conversation with Elon Musk, the owner of the Twitter network. The, the latter publicly compla uh, complimented her in many warm words for her work on the State of Israel's Twitter account. It's hard to think of a bigger compliment than that for someone who deals in the, di in the digital field. And in general, Tamar stands out for her professional abilities and goodwill, initiative and determination she shows in her work. She's an example and a model and is considered a professional and groundbreaking worker. So Tamar, the floor is yours and thank you for your work from us thank in the field. You. Thank you so much, Ambassador Na'eh. If you can pass that along to my boss, David Saranga, that would be great because those words were amazing and I'm super, super appreciative. So thank you. And I thought that's what he wrote. <laughs> ah, okay. If he wrote that, then I'll have to say thank you to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor to be here with all of you today. I see a lot of familiar faces in the group. I have to say the Jewish community of the Gulf, I think is probably my favorite Jewish community in the world. Um, I've never seen such a cohesive, united, organized community who is constantly making sure that each and every one of you feels connected in you know very different parts of the world, where sometimes it can be a little bit complicated to be a Jew or to be pro-Israel. Um, so it's really, really my honor to be here with each and every one of you. And I also have to say the short time that I've spent in the Gulf has given me a new appreciation for the Jewish communities there. So thank you so much, um, Ariella, for inviting me to speak. I'll talk a little bit about the work that my team does. Um, and then I think what we can do is we can kind of just leave it open you know, to questions and answers because I want this to be as interactive as possible. And Ariella, in terms of keeping time, you can tell me when my time is coming to a close so that I don't go over time. Does that work? Great. Perfect. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about our team. And then what I'll do is I'll break up our activity to pre-October 7th and post-October 7th, because I think that's the reality that every Jew and every Israeli in the world is living with right now. So we have a team um, at the Foreign Ministry, which is active in six languages. The main languages are English, Hebrew, Arabic, um, Spanish, Persian, and of course, um, Russian. I want to give a big shout out to Safir Mizrahi, who is responsible on my team for all the work that we do in Arabic. Her and her team do an amazing, amazing job. Um, and from my perspective, I really think the work that Israel and Arabic has done has very much directly contributed to the peace um, between Israel and its Abraham Accords neighbors. And I also think that the work that Sapir and her team does is going to contribute and continue to contribute to more countries who are going to hopefully join this uh, circle of peace. We reach about, I would say, on a normal year, about 1 billion people. We have 14 million followers worldwide. The most popular language, um, I would say, is English, followed by Persian, which is very, very, very surprising and then followed by Arabic. So those would be, I would say, the top um, three languages. And interestingly enough, since October 7th, um, we've reached 3 billion people in the span of about three months, all, all organically. And I think that is a testament to the work that my incredible team has done. Um, they work 24 seven around the clock, Shabbat, Sunday, Friday, nights, mornings, afternoons. And our life has turned upside down since since October 7th. Before October 7th, I would say a lot of the work that we did was focused on positivity. We didn't want people to view Israel in the lens of conflict because for those of us familiar with Israel, Israel is much more than the conflict that people like to talk about. It's an extremely diverse country. It's a colorful country. Um, it's a close-knit country. Everyone in Israel you know, feels like they're members of a big family. And we wanted to focus on the more positive aspects of what it means to be an Israeli and to be able to tell the Israeli story. Because as you guys know, it's very difficult for people to connect to governments. It's much easier for people to connect to people. So our entire ethos and all the work that we've done online has been to focus on personal Israeli stories and the 9 million Israelis 
who make this country as exceptional as it is. Now, I'll take you guys back to the morning of October 7th. I happened to have been overseas on vacation at that time. Um, I woke up in the morning. I happened to be a, a Shabbat observer. I was with a close friend who is not a Shabbat observer. So she had her phone on. She said, Tamar, I know you keep Shabbat, but I'm telling you, you need to know what's going on. She gave me a quick update. I turned on my phone. From that minute, it was just working around the clock, literally 24 seven for the first month. And I think we each slept about an hour a night, no exaggeration, trying to get the messaging out. And our messaging very rapidly shifted from, look how beautiful and wonderful Israel is to this is an existential threat that Israel is facing. On October 7th, like all Israelis, even those of us who are part of the government were extremely confused about what was going on. I don't think people really had a good sense of what was happening because things were unfolding so quickly. Information was coming out so quickly also because of the social networks. And since October 7th, we've focused on a variety of different topics. First and foremost, I would say our priority is bringing the hostages home. There's nothing more important than that both offline and online. And we make sure every single day around the clock to make sure that the voices of the hostages um, and the families are heard. So we post a lot of content about the hostages. We post a lot of content about humanitarian efforts that Israel you know, is putting into place to help the people of Gaza because there is so much fake news and so much misinformation that is circulated online. That misinformation ends up leading to a lot of anti-Semitism, a lot of you know, anti-Israel sentiment. So we wanna be very clear about the fact that our enemy is not the people of Gaza. Our enemy is Hamas, the terrorist organization which is running Gaza. The third message that I would say that we focus on is of course, making sure the stories of the victims of October 7th are heard. You know, for me, it's almost unbelievable because I've been doing this for months already. And every single day as I'm posting stories, it feels like an endless cycle because we're talking about thousands of people. And I find myself being shocked anew every single day when I'm being exposed to more of these stories and it's impossible to get all the stories out because there are so many. So that I would say, you know, is the third um, pillar of the work that we're doing. Also, you know, in honor of the victims, but also in honor of the families of the victims because every victim has a family and we want their families to know that we're keeping their memories alive. So I would say that's the third pillar. Um, the fourth pillar is, you know, the influence of Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, um, and the regional threats. And I would say the fifth pillar, which is my favorite pillar, um, is what we call in Hebrew chosen, which is resilience. Talking about the resilience of the Israeli people, the unity of the Israeli people, grassroots efforts that are taking place every single day, both in Israel and with Jewish communities around the world to help those in need. Um, and that's what I think really gives me strength because I think without that, you know, all of us who are involved in the field of social media, I think we would just be in a very dark place and an endless, you know, hole of depression. Um, so I really try to focus as much as I can on the resilience of the Israeli people, on the resilience of the Jewish people. Um, my message to each of you would be, first of all, thank you. Um, because there are so many people that I've met in this Zoom just from online activity. And we in Israel feel your love every single day and you guys give us the strength to do what we do. Um, and I have to say that I hope you guys feel our love and our appreciation as well. And the second message that I would give you guys, of course, for those of you who feel comfortable, is to continue building bridges with the Arab neighbors of the state of Israel because that peace is real, that peace is strong. We want that peace to continue, you know, the day after we finish this operation, please God successfully. And each and every one of you in the Jewish community on the ground, you know, in the different Gulf states, you guys are our bridge to peace. And you guys are responsible from our perspective for helping us create peace with our neighbors, which is flourishing, even with the challenges that we have. Um, so I hope that you guys keep doing that. Um, I've spoken a lot about, you know, myself and the work that we do, and now I would love to open it up to any questions that you guys might have. Okay, so we, we do have time for, for one question. Um, I guess it'll be first come, first serve, whoever raises their sure. hand. Okay, 
I see, I see RD. Um, so the, the floor is yours. No, just kidding. Okay. Uh, false alarm background noise. I feel like I'm playing a uh, Pictionary. You know, Huda, can I ask, Ariella, can I ask a question? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, hi Tamar. Thank you for everything you do 24 seven, but we, I mean, we love you guys. You're, you're the best. Um, a, a question is how, how does politics uh, play into what you do? And do you ever, do you get political influence to tell you what to say, what to support, depending on who happens to be in power? So that's a really, really, really good question. Um, I would say that right now, politics aside, I think the messaging is pretty clear. I think we're pretty united in the five pillars um, that I just said, that we just shared. Um, I would say that the Public Diplomacy Bureau has a very short chain of command, which I actually think is a really healthy thing, especially for a country that needs to put out information really quickly, because I have colleagues at other foreign ministries who say, you know, there are lots of checks and balances in place, and by the time we get the information out, it's too late. So just in terms of independence, I report to Ambassador Vivek Saranga, um, who really gives me the um, to trust me, who lets me put the material out with the expectation that if I am not 100% sure about something, I will ask him. If he is not sure about something, he will ask the Deputy Director General, and there, you know, the messaging is pretty much solved. Now, in terms of the political um, components, the foreign ministry is really not a super political entity. Um, we do take directives, of course, from the foreign minister because that is the you know individual and the leader who's making decisions regarding policy. And we have a very close relationship with the foreign minister and with the foreign minister's team to make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to messaging. But I have to say, really, since the first day of war, um, we've been with two different foreign ministers and the message has been pretty clear. It's been pretty united. The overall message is we are in this to dismantle Hamas. We are in this to bring the hostages home. And we are in this to make sure that October 7th never happens again. So in terms of the politics, it, it doesn't play as much as a role or an effect as you might think it would. Great, thank you. Sure. Wonderful. So um, Tamara, I think there's probably a million questions. Um, so what I'll what I'll suggest is for any other questions, you can feel free if you want um, to put it in the in the chat below or to DM and we can forward it. Uh, on. I'm also I'm also going to put in the chat my email address and my Twitter handle if any of you guys want to reach out separately. Excellent. Um, and uh, I guess I, I'd be remiss without saying that, you know, God willing, in a few weeks, hopefully as soon as possible, we'll, we'll be connecting on these Zooms, uh, hopefully in a in a much uh, better place than we are right now. But I do want to say that, and I've heard this before from people, even from, you know, countries that are not yet part of the Accords, but, you know, Tamar, the work that you're doing, it really makes an impact, not just for those of us in the region who are part of this new alliance, but even for those who aren't, I think you kind of alluded a little bit to this when you talked about how the Persian uh, stuff you guys are doing gets so much pickup. You know, for many people who maybe are living in places that don't yet have this warm friendship, their way to see what Israel really is is actually through social media because nobody can see. If they don't follow the handle, then nobody knows they're following them, but they can just kind of keep checking to see what they're what they're posting. So all I would say is that, um, you know, you're, the, the diplomacy you guys are doing in a world that's just becoming more and more digital is really, really critical. And so um, during the hard times like now, and even during the really nice times, I think, you know, what you guys and your team are doing is just incredible. So um, I just want to thank you again for taking the time. I know right now you guys are incredibly busy, let alone on a Friday afternoon, but um, I just want to say thank you very much for joining us. Um, and we hope we hope to have you back in, in, in good times where you could tell us some of the, the incredible, you know, stories and people that you guys have met via these handles, which really are making a difference in the, in the world. So um, I just want to say thank you. And now we'll move a few thousand miles away to uh, to Baku, and um, we'll hear some words of Divrei Torah from Rabbi Siegel. Hi, hello. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting. It's uh, really nice to see community getting together on Friday. Usually on Friday, everyone is busy preparing for Shabbat, but stopping everything and uh, enjoying Shabbat before Shabbat begins, it's a really good idea. Uh, remember, uh, it makes me, it gives me memory to COVID time when we couldn't have 
Shabbat services. So we had, we did it on Fridays. And as soon as COVID finished, we just went back to the synagogue and are not gathering. And I'm just looking at it and, and listening and see the faces. And I'm thinking, what a great idea to keep it going. It just um, on Friday, in between preparation for Shabbat, to stop everything and to, to really... Uh, hear about Shabbat, to speak about the parasha and other uh, good information that bring brothers. So Chazak Baruch, very, very good idea and a, a very a big thanks to those who are organizing it. I'm happy to be here with you from Baku, from Azerbaijan. We are in a special time. Uh, we are in, in the month of Adar, the first Adar, and today is Purim Katan. Because Purim Katan is, a, I would say, a, a Purim is usually on the 14th day of Adar, but this year, because we are a leap year and we have two months of Adar, so today is also, 14th of Adar is also a day that is celebrating and are happy, and we have to add in joy and happiness. And I, I always remember this, uh, they were saying about one Jew who was the whole month of Adar, for the 30 days of Adar, he was every day drinking and having a good time and, and singing and dancing. And someone came over to him and said, listen, why why the whole month of Adar? Purim is only one day. So he was saying that when Aman wanted to uh, destroy the Jewish people, God forbid, and he thought about this, Aman was a very smart man. And he thought to himself that if I would try to do it and it would not work out, the Jewish people will have a new holiday. So let, let me focus on one day that if it's not going to work out, they will have only one holiday. So he said, I know his thoughts. That's why I'm celebrating every day of this month. So going back to the parasha, we are on Friday. This Shabbat, hopefully we will be reading in the Torah, Parashat Tetzaveh. And it's a very special parasha because we find something very interesting in it. What Moses, the leader of the Jewish people, who is uh, since is since he was born, in every parasha, we see his name many, many times until the last book of the Torah of Dvarim, when he is talking, then it's a little bit less. But from the from the time Moshe was born until the end of the book of Bamidbar, every parasha has Moshe names several times. I would say over probably uh, tens of times in every parasha. And uh, in, in if you're looking into parasha Tetzaveh, you would not find the name of Moses. If you look over and over, and I'm sure you'll do on this Shabbat when you're reading the Torah, the, only, the name of Moshe is not in our parasha. And it's something very, very uh, interesting. Why? And the question becomes even stronger a little bit, because if you look into it, it's not like he's not there and we are talking about something else. God is speaking to, Mo to Moses. The, the parasha starts with the word, and you will command, who is you? Moses. He speaks to Moshe Rabbeinu, but he doesn't say his name. And all through the parasha, everything we read, Moshe is not there. His name is not there. He is there, but his name is not mentioned not even one time. So the Baal Aturim, who is asking, he's saying, he's saying something very interesting. He's explaining that why Moshe, his name is not in the parasha, because if next week, we, when we read in the in the Torah about the, the when the Jews made the the the, the made the the gold the gold effort with Cheta Egel when they were uh, worshiping the the uh, when Moses was away for a while so Mo, when after when Mo, Moshe was asking God to forgive the Jewish people Moses told God that if you're not going to forgive the Jewish people so please erase my name from the Torah from your book take away my name from the book if you're not ready to forgive the Jewish people. So the Torah, the Baal Torah is explaining because a, such a, 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 a prophet like Moses is saying such a word came out from his mouth. That's why even though God forgave the Jewish people, but still one parasha, his name was taken out. But there's a very interesting explanation that our, our, our uh, rabbi is explaining something very strong and very powerful. Basically, in this time that we all seek for, you know, real leadership, it's something that sticks out to see what, what a leader should be like. Usually what, you know, sometimes we see, we see many very charismatic leaders, smart leaders, successful leaders. But this is what Moses does, does here. It's something to bring the idea of a leadership to a whole different level. Moses is basically ready to give up everything 
for his people. Moses tell, is ready to give up, take out, if you know, the Torah, the, the, the Torah is called Torah to Moshe. He's ready to take up everything that he has in life. The Torah that he gave the Jewish people, this is, that's, that's what we have for Moses still today. If, if his name was be taken out from the Torah, what will he have? He's ready to give up everything for the Jewish people. In the Lubavitch Rebbe is explaining something very interesting. It, he said that it's even deeper in a way. Moses basically tells God that the connection between me between the Jewish people and God is much even higher than the Torah. Sometimes when someone makes a mistake and someone is 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 is, 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 is doing a sin that is not allowed according to Torah, that's a, a, a level of connection that if you do what's in the Torah, it's good. If not, so you're not connected. Comes Moshe said, no, the connection with Jews and God is even higher than the, it's even higher than the connection that Jews with the Torah. It's much higher in the Torah is not the book that should disturb. Moshe is not just telling God that if not, take me out from Torah. Moshe says the Torah is here to strengthen the connection between God and the Jewish people. The Torah is here to show and to prove how there this connection is much stronger and nothing can be in between. And that's why he says, take, take my name out of the Torah because the, if the Torah is here to, to disconnect the Jewish people from God, so I'm, I don't want to be there. And when God forgives the Jewish people and the Jewish people and, and, and Moses' name is out of this parasha, reminds us of this. How should we act to every Jew? And how we should be to someone who is maybe doing something that a little bit not as, as we expect and not as we want. The connection between us, the Jewish people, ourselves, in between ourselves, should be in such a level and as God as God expect from from as as God is connection to us is higher than anything. Our connection also should be like this in a way that we always be ready to forgive and to to be together and to unite, and that's what will bring more blessing from uh, from God to all of us. And hopefully, we'll see we'll have peaceful days, especially in the month of Adar, that we have a very good experience in our history to win over over our enemies. That this. This uh, time, this uh, this uh, strong time, and especially in Purim Katan, will bring this blessing to our brothers and sisters in Israel, and we'll have good news from all around the world with the coming of Mashiach, hopefully in our days. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rabbi Siegel. Um, I mentioned at the top of the call, uh, really how how amazing your community is, and I highly encourage everybody. Um, to make a visit at some point. Uh, it's really, um, it's there's just so much rich history there when it comes yes. to the Jewish. Yes, everyone is welcome to visit Baku, and uh, uh, especially from the Gulf. We have a lot of direct flights from many from many Gulf countries. So just let us know a day before, or if you, if you, and you can just let us know in the morning if you need anything that we can help. So a day before will help us to prepare and to to host you. It's it's very interesting because Baku, Azerbaijan, as you say, one of the fifty seven Muslim countries, but it's probably the first Muslim country that has such a good relation with Israel. And, and again, to, even today, in these times of the year, and since the 7th of October, walking around the streets here with kippah and with, you know, with a very uh, bright out a Jewish outfit, is very safe and is very special. And we have good connection, not only with the government, but with the people of Azerbaijan, the mutual respect and the, the coexistence. It's something that really can be an example to the whole, to, to the whole world. Not only, we, today also we see that, the, you know, that the connection between Jews and the Muslim world is much easier and better than in other worlds. So let's hope we'll get better days and, you know, to be better and better. Absolutely. And we were talking about this at the top of the call, but next year's COP is going to be in Azerbaijan. So um, it'll be, you know, Israel made the announcement of kind of who's running it from their side, and it'll be very exciting to see a pavilion with the uh, Israeli flag on it. So we thank you for joining us, um, Rabbi Siegel. And now I'm going to turn it over to Alex, who's going to read from this week's Parsha. <laughs> חלד וגמן ותולת שני ושש משר תעשה אותו אותו רבוע יהיה כפול זרת אורכו וזרת רוחבו ומינתה בו מילואת אבן ארבעה טורים אבן טור אודם פידתה וברקת הטור האחד והטור השני נופר ספיר ויהלום 
והטור השלישי לשם שבו והחלמה והטור הרביעי תכשיר ושוהם וישפה משובת עם זהב יהיו במלואתם ואבנים תהיינה על שמות בני ישראל שתים עשרה על שמותם פיתוחי חותם איש על שמות תהיינה לשני עשר שבט ועשית על החושן שחשרות גבלות מעשה אבות זהב טהור ועשית על החושן שתי טבעות זהב ונתת את שתי הטבעות על שני קצות החושן ונתת את שתי אבתות הזהב על שתי הטבעות אל קצות החושן ואת שתי קצות שתי אבתות תיתן על שתי המשבצות ונתת קצפות עייפות אל מול פניו ועשית שתי טבעות זהב ושמת אותם על שני קצות החושן על שפתו אשר על עבר עייפת ביתה ועשית שתי טבעות זהב ונתת אותם על שתי קטפות עייפות מלמטה ממול פניו לעומת ארבעתו ממעל החשב עייפות והרגסו נת החושן מטבעתו אל טבעות העפות בפתיל תכלת להיות על חשב העפות ולא יזר החושן מעל העפות ונשא ארון את שמות בני ישראל בחושן על המשפט על ליבו בבוא אל הקודש לזיכרון לפני אדוני תמיד You shall make a breast piece of decision worked into a design. Make it in the style of the Afad. Make it of gold, of blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and a fine twisted linen. It shall be square and doubled, a span in length and a span in width. Set it in mountain stones in four, sorry, set it in mounted stones in four rows of stones. The first row shall be a row of carnelian, chrysolite, and emerald. The second row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and an amethyst. The third row, a jacinth, an agate, and a crystal. And the fourth row, a beryl, a lapis, lazuli, and a jasper. They shall be framed with gold in their mountings. The stones shall correspond in number to the names of the sons of Israel, 12 corresponding to their names. They shall be engraved like seals, each with its name for the 12 tribes. On the breast piece, make braided chains of corded work in pure gold. Make two rings of gold on the breast piece and fasten the two rings at the two ends of the breast piece, attaching the two golden cords to the two rings at the ends of the breast piece. Then fasten the two ends of the cords to the two frames, which, which you shall attach to the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front. Make two rings of gold and attach them to the two ends of the breast piece at its inner edge, which faces the ephod. And make two other rings of gold and fasten them on the front of the ephod, low on the two shouldered pieces, close to its seam above the decorated band. The breast piece shall be held in a place by a cord of blue from its rings to the rings of the ephod, so that the breast piece rests on the decorated band and does not come loose from the ephod. Aaron shall carry the names of the sons of Israel on the breast piece of decision over his heart when he enters the sanctuary, For, for remembrance before Adonai at all times. Inside the breast piece of decision, you shall place the Urim and Thummim so that they're over Aaron's heart when he comes before Adonai. Thus, Aaron shall carry the instrument of decision for the Israelites over his heart before Adonai at all times. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much, Eric. And now we will turn back to Ambassador Naya, who's going to read the Chief Rabbi of the UK's prayer. אנו מתאבלים על אובדן מאות אנשים, נשים וטף, אשר נרצחו בזדון ומתפללים על נפשותם. אבינו מלכנו, שלח רפואה שלמה, לאלפי פצועי עמך. אבינו מלכנו, רחם על אחינו השבויים, והוציאם מאפלה וצלמה בית לגאולה, ומוסרותיהם תפתח, ומצוקותיהם אצילם, והשיבה מהרה לחיק משפחותיהם. 
אבינו מלכנו, הגן על משפחות ישראל מאימת מוות, וחזק חיילי צבא ההגנה לישראל, אשר שמים נפשם בכפם, בהצביעם לקראת אויבינו. אבינו מלכנו, אשר בידך לב מלכים ושרים, תקן בעצה טובה מלפניך את שרי ישראל לנצח במלחמתנו, כדי שיהיו תושביה שאננים מעין מחריד. אבינו מלכנו, פרו סוכת שלומך על יושבי ארצך, ככתוב, ונתתי שלום בארץ, ושכבתם בעין מחריד, והשבתי חיה רעה מן הארץ, וחרב לא תעבור בארצכם. ברכנו אבינו בביטחון ושלווה, ושים שלום אמיתי וקיים על מדינת ישראל, ועל כל יושבי תבל ארצך. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו, ועל כל ישראל, ואימרו Thank you very much. And now we'll turn back to Eric, who's going to read the prayer for the GCC. May he who gives salvation to kings and dominion to princes, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, who delivers his servant David from the evil sword, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, bless and protect, guard and help, exalt, magnify and uplift, his majesty, the king of Saudi Arabia, his majesty, the king of Bahrain, his majesty, the sultan of Oman, His Highness, the President of the UAE, His Highness, the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness, the Emir of Qatar, and all of their crown princes. And may the Supreme King of Kings in his mercy put a spirit of wisdom and understanding into their hearts and the hearts of all their counselors and officials to deal kindly with us, the House of Jacob, and all the people of this land. Be their shelter and stronghold and let them not falter in their days and in hours. May these lands be blessed with stability, prosperity, and peace. May this be his will, and let us say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Before I turn it back to Alex, who will usher us out with Shalom Aleichem, just a couple of quick uh, reminders. Please join us next week, same time, same place. Just kidding. Not same time. Uh, new time, 30 minutes later. Uh, same uh, same place and same Zoom link. Um, we will be starting at 4.30 UAE time. You got a reminder about it already earlier this week, and there'll be another one next week. Um, so again, 4.30, um, where, wherever you are, whatever is 4.30 UAE time, that's when we're starting. Next week, we've got somebody from the Jewish community um, of Hong Kong, who's going to speak with us and tell us a little bit about the history of their community um, and walk us through kind of what life looks like there now. Um, the following week, we're going to have um, the CEO of NJY Camps coming to speak with us. He's going to speak about something called Camp Abraham, um, which is a camp designed for Jewish teens in the U.S. that's going to take place in Abu Dhabi. Um, so please join us for those two weeks. Again, next week, 4.30, um, but same Zoom link. All right, Alex, over to you. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Yashareit, Malachi Elyon, Mimelech, Malachi Yamlachim, Akadosh Baruch Hu. Bochem le Shalom Aleichem, Yashalom Aleichem, Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Have a good week and see you next week. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Be well.